Hi, my name is Chuck McWilliams, and I'm a meteorologist with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. I'm here today to tell you about how the National Weather Service uses storm reports during severe weather and how you can help. By the end of this short presentation, you'll better understand what severe weather is, how to identify it, and how to report it. Meteorologists at the National Weather Service cannot do their job without you, the severe storm spotter. The tools at the disposal of a warning meteorologist are the radar and the information it shows, the conditions of the atmosphere and whether or not it supports the chance for severe weather, and the final tool are those who report weather conditions directly to the National Weather Service without whom they could not do their job. The radar is an amazing piece of machinery. It can tell a meteorologist many important details about a storm. But like this graphic shows, the radar cannot see what is happening below the storm. There are specific definitions for severe weather, and they include hail, at least one inch in diameter or larger, wind in excess of 58 miles per hour, a confirmed tornado, or flash flooding. The National Weather Service does not issue weather warnings for lightning. In our part of the country, tornadoes are most likely to occur during the months of April, May, and June. That being said, tornadoes are possible most times of the year, as this graphic shows. While tornadoes can occur any time of day, the most likely time of day is from mid-afternoon through early evening. The increased occurrence at this time of day relates to the peak heating that occurs during the late afternoon hours during the warm months. In the real world, not all features will be quite as visible as in this schematic, depending on one's distance from the storm. Now these features include an anvil, which is an elongated cloud at the top of the storm that spreads downwind with upper level steering winds. The anvil will appear solid, not wispy, and will have sharp, well-defined edges. A main storm tower. This is the trunk of the storm that is the visible updraft of the storm from its base near the ground to just below the anvil. This part of the storm can show vertically oriented towers with sharp, well-defined edges a solid cauliflower appearance, visible rotation in the middle and lower levels, and possibly striations evident in clouds. A rain-free base or wall cloud, usually persisting for 10 minutes or longer, often but not always rotating visibly, sometimes accompanied by obvious rising or sinking motion of cloud pieces. An overshooting top directly above the main storm updraft tower and the anvil, this is generally a sign of a very strong updraft. A flanking line, which is a row of towering cumulus clouds, stair-stepping up to the main storm tower. New storm cells can develop from the flanking line, which usually extends south or southwest of a thunderstorm. A flanking line indicates the storm is drawing air from many miles away and likely will sustain itself or intensify for some time. When it comes to your safety, there are four things to keep in mind. First, be aware of the risk around you. Avoid tunnel vision. Two, communicate where you are and where you are going. Three, have a way out in case you get in the path of severe weather. And finally, know where you will go to seek shelter if necessary. Additional hazards for storm spotters in rural areas include travel on gravel roads during storms. When forwarding a report to the National Weather Service, think of the four W's. The who, the what, the where, the when. Who is passing along the report? What has been observed? Where did the observation take place? And when did the observation occur?
Here we have two great examples of how to give a severe weather report. They are concise and hit the main points of what the National Weather Service needs to know. As I read through each report, see if you can pick out the four W's. This is Officer Jill Smith. Baseball-sized hail fell in Gretna at 6.57 p.m. The hail lasted about five minutes and broke windows, stripped trees, and damaged cars. My name is John Smith. I'm a trained spotter. A tornado moved through my place, which is five miles west of Trainer on Highway 92. The tornado hit about 7.45 p.m. and only lasted a few seconds. I watched it move northeast. Fortunately, damage was limited to a couple of outbuildings and a windbreak. No one was injured. Both are great examples of reports, but the first is a little better as it is short and to the point. When passing along severe hail reports, two key points to remember are to always report the largest stone that you see and to compare to common objects such as currency. Please avoid using marbles to reference hail size. As you can see from the graphic, marbles come in a variety of sizes. Radar indicated bow echoes, which are seen quite often across this area, are often accompanied by downburst winds in excess of 60 miles an hour that can persist for up to 15 minutes. High-end downbursts are even stronger, and the, the winds on this slide correlate with those seen in an EF-1 to an EF-2 range tornado. Shelf clouds, which are typical with bow echoes, are low horizontal banded clouds attached to the base of a parent cloud, with rising cloud motion often seen in the leading outer part of the shelf cloud, while the underside often appears turbulent and wind-torn. Generally, a shelf cloud appears on the leading edge of the storm. Key items to forward to the National Weather Service for severe wind reports include any measured wind speeds in excess of 50 miles an hour, the size of any broken branches or downed trees, any structural damage or impacts such as injuries, road blockages, or power outages. When forwarding observations of wall clouds, Always look for persistence as well as for rotation. While all tornadoes begin as funnel clouds, not all funnel clouds become tornadoes. The difference? With a tornado, the funnel cloud eventually gains contact with the ground. An easy way to determine and confirm a tornado is to look for the visibility of any debris just above the Earth's surface. When forwarding funnel cloud and tornado reports to the National Weather Service, it is vital to include the location of the feature, the direction the funnel cloud or tornado is moving, and any tornadic damage or injuries, since time is critical. Please report these as soon as safely possible. The atmosphere does produce several features that, while non-threatening, do appear similar to severe weather. These include Virga, listed on that picture in the top right, Mamatis clouds in the bottom left, and Scud clouds seen in the bottom right. Don't be afraid if you are confused or uncertain when seeing these different features. Just forward your position to the National Weather Service and they can help. When observing flooding, be sure to report any incidents of heavy rain, that includes rates of an inch or more per hour, any significant flooding, not just those that are a result of poor drainage, and always forward any road closures due to flooding. The latter is vital as the number one cause of deaths for all different weather parameters are from people driving through flooded roads.
Facebook and Twitter are great ways to send reports and pictures of what you're seeing. An additional location is the website for the National Weather Service Forecast Office in Omaha Valley. Now for a quick recap of what we've gone over today. Never forget, always remember the four W's when sending reports to the National Weather Service. Who is making the report? What was observed? Where did the observation take place? And when was it observed? Always report any large hail. Compare the size of the hail to common objects such as currency. Any wind gusts in excess of 50 miles an hour. Any observations of wall clouds, especially if rotation has been observed. Tornadoes and funnel clouds. Any damage from strong winds or tornadoes. And any flooding. In particular, flooding that is resulting in the closure of roads. Thanks again for viewing today. Please send us your reports via email or social media. And please forward any questions to the National Weather Service. Thanks again.